Hi, everyone. Welcome to the MSG 150 final. We come your way during the week after Nick postgame shows, except when the Knicks are on the West Coast. And as always, we've got a great show for you tonight. Mello's first game was a blazer last night. We'll talk about that. Should Derek Jeter be a unanimous selection to the Baseball Hall of Fame? Patrick Ewing is going to join us. His Hoyas play tomorrow night at MSG. And Teofimo, Teofimo Lopez, a boxer, going for a title in December at MSG. We're going to meet him and have some more food as we continue with Food Week. Yes, Food and, Week. And, uh, Sorry. You know, people are making fun of my, my khakis tonight, which is a, which is a real... Well, are they khakis or mom jeans? They're khakis. <laughs> I mean, they are khakis. Sure. Don't let them do that to you, people. I mean, come you on. Great. I know it's food great. week. I didn't know it was casual yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be casual out you here. You look good, man. Don't worry. You're all right. We've got to be confident. We eat this week. <laughs> what are you saying? You yeah, can we had a lot of food. food. <laughs> we got the pizza cupcake coming up later, too. How do you get anything eaten if she's taking pictures of everything? You're like my grandma. Listen... We took pictures and we enjoyed, did we not, Peter? We did. We had pizza. Yeah. I, I, I'm still trying to figure out how Bill gets to go out on all the excursions with food. Wally and I just sit back. What and are the this odds stuff. you're going to be there when you have to be there at the time that we were supposed to be? Oh, that's saying. That's wow, he's saying you're not. No, I'm if, saying to get you there at the time food, that we were required to be food there. Involved, I am never late. Okay. That's, well, that's, are you normally tardy? I don't think no, you're tardy. No, no. You're just busy is the point, not yeah, tardy. Yeah. Could, uh, we got a great show ahead. my co-pilot. Uh, hot topic number one. You guys watched Mellow last night? Yeah, absolutely. What yes. do we think? 24 minutes, 4 for 14, 10 points. John, what's that like? I mean, uh, the step on the floor. It's, it's, he, was, he was here in the city two days before <laughs> hanging out. I, I can't imagine having Working a year out. off and then True. starting the game and just... I mean, you don't have your legs, but uh, I think he I think he played well enough, uh, you know, from being a year off. I think he uh, uh, played fairly well. What was the expectation is my thing, honestly. What's the expectation for the whole thing? Mm, that's what do point. we think about that? I mean, well, now that Pau Gasol is not going to play for them, yeah. they need a four. Weird. You know, they need him. Because Zach Collins, Zach is Collins out, out for right. a while with the shoulder. And, and, and they thought Gasol would give him some minutes there, which he's now no longer going to. He's probably going to hold the clipboard now. So they really need him to play. And, and as he's on a team with two guards average 20 shots a game. So it's not that they need him to be mellow that we knew here in New York, but they could use a guy that could fill in the blanks when they need some wing scoring, which... The first five minutes were promising because you saw Vintage Mello, guy yes. that can get his get to his spot, get his shots. Once the legs were gone, and we saw the legs were gone. I mean, that we one. We tried that, that dunk. Yeah, he almost <laughs> collapsed. It was nostalgic. That, was, <laughs> that, that dunk, that, that brought back some bad memories. Where's Roy Hibbert? <laughs> right. You know, but, but still, I thought, okay, well, he's not going to have his legs. You know that. It's going to take, take him time. a while. That's going to take time. The game is still there. So are you, are get, you happy that he's getting a shot? I'm super though? excited yeah. to see him yeah. back. And I think when you heard him talking post-game, you could hear the gratitude in his voice. Yeah. At points, I wondered if he was going to give us a tear or two. But I get you on filling in the blanks offensively at that four position. But Paul Gasol and Zach Collins were guys that could defend at that four position as well. So what does that part of this look like? Oh, it's always the it's always going to be the discussion with Melo is, is how do they defend? Can they defend? What's you know, is he going to be that area that other teams just say, put him in pick and roll, you sure. score anytime. Yeah. You want. I think with white side behind him, that kind of erases Helpful. some of the Literally. mistakes he might make. Right, because <laughs> of his shot blocking ability. And Melo Melo's best years were when he had Kenyon Martin around, when he had Tyson, Tyson Chandler. Chandler around Absolutely. to protect him. And when he lost guys Guys like that, obviously the defense was a lot more exposed. All right, Mello comes back, they lose. Uh, Portland's now 5-10. and ten. Mm. Another hot topic to discuss. Baseball's Hall of Fame ballot was released on Monday. Derek Cheater's on the ballot. Mariano Rivera, unanimous selection last year for the first time. First time anyone ever been a unanimous selection. Does that make it more likely that Derek Jeter will be a unanimous selection? I'm deferring to Han. He, Play to my strength. Oh, you're definitely a baseball guy, but I love the Yankees. Yeah, you're a Yankees I, I guy. Think, Go ahead. I think Jeter should definitely be a first ballot. You know, no, no. So it was like a huge and deal. And then, and then, and then, he's going to get in. But, you know, in the past, there, some of these greats, Willie Mays, et cetera, were yeah. not unanimous yeah, selections. Yeah, unanimous here's was why. a huge thing, right? Why? Vote, yes. And, and it was huge for many reasons. And everybody agrees Mariano Rivera, the greatest closer of all time. That's why everybody decides, of course, give him the vote. You can, ar you, you can argue only for it, not against it. Jeter, you can argue against There'll, there'll be a couple of guys who'll say he's going to get in. He deserves how is to get he in. not a Hall of Famer? I mean, no, no, no. no he's the unanimous vote. That's, that's not how it goes. Hold on a second. Eye you, numbers. You, you get the, you get you the ballot. You say Derek Jeter, Hall of Fame or not. Stop. Off? It's not Hall of Fame or not. All right? That's not how it works. The process is this. You get votes. Now, you know certain guys are going to get enough percentage in the first time around. They'll be first ballot. You know it. The writers decide this stuff. They control. They're the curators. So they're the ones that decide it. And there will be some writers who know he'll get enough votes, 
I'm going to give my votes to some guys that need to stay on the ballot that might not get in. See, so they I, stay I on just, the ballot. I, the whole process is political. To, come on, Alan, listen. Derek Jeter voted, doesn't deserve to be in the wasn't the case last year. And that's no, well, no, because everybody Martin. knew that they, first of all, they had to get past the, the unanimous thing. So the guy that you give it to is Mo Rivera because of everything about him, not just as a pitcher, but as a human being. It was everything about him that told you, make him the guy that's unanimous, and now we get past it. So you're saying but they're going to be... a guy that people will argue doesn't deserve it, and then so some guys, writers, again, this doesn't is deserve well, Doesn't deserve what? A unanimous, unanimous vote. He'll get votes. Uh, He's going to get enough to but, get in. So who is going to consciously have a ballot and say, I'm not voting for Derek Jeter? You'll see. I, I, I a just, writer or two from Boston. <laughs> uh, now, there are those players, of course, there have been allegations of performance-enhancing drugs. We're talking about Clemens and Bonds, yeah. whatever. You look at what happened with Bonds and Clemens last year. They inched up a little bit because in 2018, each was a little bit below where they were last year. you got to get to 75%. Right, yeah. right now, last year, Clemens at 60, Bonds at 59%. They're inching the right way. Question is: Is this year we think they might get in? No, I don't think they get. 15%, you, no hesitation. Fifteen no. percent is a long way to yeah, go. They'll, they'll, that's exactly. They'll, there's still enough. Again, this is the writers who decide this stuff. This is not a fan vote. Barry this Bond is not be in, peers. Man. This oh. is writers who were there and he, covered that era who believe that they don't deserve it. So but now they'll continue to get votes. There'll be enough writers, I think, that will say it's not going to happen because Clemens, first of all, his greatness. We all know about before the allegation. Same with Bond. You can make the case they were Hall of Famers without. That, that's my but point. But that's part of oh, that's part the of problem. the story. Again, you can't take don't, that out. Don't take what I'm saying here. Is, is yeah. I believe no, it. but I'm this saying, is not my take. This in those two cases, you could say, hey, they're Hall of Famers before that era. You could. You absolutely could. But they did what they did mm -hmm. in the era. They didn't have to. They did. Bonds did it because he was seeing that I'm great, but everybody else getting more attention than I am. <laughs> so let me see what I can do on this stuff. And boy, what he did was oh, prolific. Man. So wow. I just, I, again, this is controlled by writers. I don't trust them. So I think there's enough of them that will feel like as long as I'm around and I have a vote, that guy's not getting in. Is it time for the process to be changed? Does it bother you? Oh, I felt like that forever. Tested, okay. uh, positive for anything? It's, I know. That's the other thing. It's, always, it's all allegations. John, former pro athlete, what do you think about if these guys, in fact, use performance-enhancing drugs, should they be hollow? Yeah, how would you feel? I mean, I would never do anything like that. I, I guess you'd be kind of upset playing against someone that was using it and you're not. Um, but I, I, in that era, I, I felt like everyone in baseball was, was doing it. It was like a known thing. To, it was like promoted. Like they wanted you to do it. Uh, it, was, it was good for the game. I feel like it was. <laughs> okay. It was good for the game because they brought the fans back. Chicks the whole Mark, long ball was the, the commercial. Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa uh, thing brought fans back to baseball after the strike and all that. So yeah. everyone knew what, what, what they were on, they, and they didn't stop it then. You know, so I don't, you know, I, I think those guys should definitely be. In I the, say get uh, them in, put an asterisk on it, put it in, put it on the plaque. You know, because there's the definitely heart. some guys in there that, that, are, that did take uh, PEDs, right? There's definitely some if guys in. The Hall in. of Fame is uh, the museum for baseball history. That's part of baseball history.